Dawagandists are obsessed with controlling what other people say, and they'll try just about anything if they think it will help them silence critics of Islam. They're constantly trying to get critics of Islam banned from social media. They'll dox critics of Islam. They'll use racial slurs. They'll pray for critics of Islam to get diseases. They'll threaten critics of Islam, threaten their families, physically attack them. It's an obsession. But you may have noticed that more people are criticizing Muhammad and the Quran than ever before. So how are all those cartoon killings working out for the Dawah gangs? Seems like their tactics just aren't helping them because they don't have a tactical genius on their side. I'm inclined to laugh and make fun of them, but I'm in a Santa Claus kind of mood right now, so I'm going to help them just this once. I'm going to show the Dawagandists and keyboard jihadis of the world how they can finally silence all critics of Islam, including me. Let's read a tweet to get us started. One of my friends is a primary school teacher. A Muslim kid told some teacher he has two mummies. The school got excited and started telling everyone how brave he is to accept LGBT stuff as a Muslim, etc. Anyway, turns out his dad has two wives. This got 11,500 retweets because it's a hilarious story. But this tweet isn't from someone who's making fun of Islam for polygamy. This tweet was posted by a devout Muslim who's making fun of schools for jumping to the conclusion that two moms means two lesbians and for thinking that devout Muslims were supporting the LGBT cause. When people found out that he was making fun of leftists who were desperately seeking support and confirmation from the Muslim community, they started complaining. And he replied, Nice to know this tweet made people laugh across the globe. Stay blessed. But what made me laugh were the amount of woke leftist libs it triggered. Stay salty. His point is pretty straightforward. Leftists who are looking for genuine support for the LGBTQ community shouldn't be looking to Muslims who take their religion seriously. But other Muslims spotted an inconsistency among progressives. It's a hilarious story. But on a serious note, I find it weird that it's progressive to have an open relationship or be in a triangle relationship, but weird if a man has two wives. Kinda odd. Now, I'm no fan of polygamy, but the Muslims have a point here, don't they? If you're a man and you say you're polyamorous and that you're in love with multiple women and that you have relationships with multiple women, you're no longer considered a dirtbag. Instead, you're cheered on for being so progressive in your relationships. But if you decide to marry the women you have relationships with, suddenly you're polygamous and not progressive and no one will cheer for you. Where's the consistency? Consistency, along with a bit of shaming and name-calling, is what Dawagandists can use to eventually silence critics of Muhammad. Here's how to do it. Step one, demand consistency from leftists. Tell them that they should be cheering for polygamy just as much as they cheer for every other kind of relationship. Consistency has never been much of a concern for them, but since they're obsessed with the idea of being on the same side with Muslims, I really think they would go for this. And if they don't go for it, just start calling them Islamophobes and watch how quickly they start celebrating polygamy. So get the leftists to embrace polygamous relationships alongside all the other relationships that they embrace. Step two, demand that a P for polygamous be added to the LGBTQIA plus list. Make it LGBTQIA plus P. Any Muslim men who are polygamous can then start including themselves in the LGBTQIA plus P community. Laws against polygamy will soon have to be changed because most politicians don't want to be on the wrong side of LGBTQIA plus P issues. So criticism of polygamy will no longer be tolerated. And this means that Muhammad can no longer be criticized for having nine wives at one time. Step three, once the letter P has been comfortably united to the other letters, once the letters have come together like Voltron, wait a while, 
like two or three years, and then start suggesting that the letter P actually stands for pedophilic. What could be more progressive than that? And there are plenty of child marriages in the Muslim world, so there are plenty of men who can claim to be part of the LGBTQIA plus P, where P stands for pedophilic community. And once pedophilic has been established as a kind of relationship that cannot be criticized, and let's face it, the world is heading in that direction anyway, once pedophilic is just as progressive as any other orientation, Dawagandists can finally block all criticism against Muhammad for having sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. All of the major platforms are already looking for an excuse to ban critics of Islam. Facebook once suspended me for getting threatened by a keyboard jihadi. He threatened to murder me. I said to my Facebook friends, look at what he just said, and Facebook suspended me for being threatened. Twitter suspended me even when I was condemning violence against Muslims because they just wanted to suspend me. YouTube has repeatedly suspended me for making fun of ISIS. If that's how the platforms treat critics of Islam when Islam isn't tacked on to the end of the LGBTQIA plus alliance, how would the platforms treat us if Islam had this additional protection? What if Islam had the double protection of being the favorite religion of leftists everywhere and being part of the LGBTQIA plus P alliance? We'd be nuked from orbit. No one would ever be allowed to criticize Islam again, not on social media. So, to all the Dawagandists out there, if you really want to protect your fake prophet, the most obvious false prophet in history, from criticism, you don't need to threaten us with violence. You don't need to threaten our wives. All you need to do is take your place in the LGBTQIA plus P community. And if you're not willing to take your place in the LGBTQIA plus P community, those of us who are watching are going to start wondering. We're going to start asking ourselves, why is it that all of the Muslim politicians who are elected are champions of the LGBTQIA plus community when it's convenient for their political agenda, while the rest of you do nothing but mock and insult and degrade that community behind the scenes. It's as if you're just using people to help you gain political power, knowing that if you were to get the political power you crave, you would use it to exterminate those people.